Thank you all for coming today. We have a lot of ground to cover, a lot of information to go over. At the end of the presentation, we'll take some questions. Let's get started. Uh, my name is Sean Smith. I'm a market development manager with New Millennium Building Systems. Today we're here to talk to you about system-based steel building solutions using joist and deck. Now this is an AIA um, and HSW accredited presentation. If you're a structural engineer, it's also PDH accredited. And these are our course numbers. Um, our AIA number is 4010-7447 and our AIA course number is 2022. So there's four learning objectives for this course. <clears throat> the first is the range of steel is the range of steel joists and deck combinations, building applications for steel joists and deck, coatings and finishing options for exposed joists and deck systems, which is very important if you're doing natatoriums or recreation centers. And the fourth chapter is sustainable advantages for steel joist and deck systems. Starting off with a range of steel uh, building systems, uh, chapter one. So there's lots of different considerations that need to be thought of when you're designing with deck and joist. Aesthetics, finish, fire protection, life safety are very important and you find those with your composite uh, deck designs. Acoustics, there's many different types of acoustical deck. You have a dovetail acoustical deck, cellular acoustical deck, and even the standard types of deck, your B and N deck can also be made acoustical as well. Structural loading, sustainability is very important now. You can get a high recycle content now in deck and joist. Timeline budget programming, those are all uh, impacted positively when you design efficiently with longer span joists and deck. Uh, functionality and performance are also things to consider when you're looking at your deck and joist combinations for buildings. So starting at the very beginning here, since this is an introductory course going over different types of deck and joists and their combinations, uh, the standard joists that are available on the market uh, are the K-series, LH-series, DLH-series, KCS joist, which are a, a very heavy-duty joist where you can put point loads anywhere on the deck, and then load zone joist. Now, out of these standard types of joists, there's different shapes that we typically run into. There's a parallel cord where the top and bottom cords run parallel to one another. There's a single pitch top cord and the double pitch top cord. There's also special steel joist profiles. We would call these maybe architectural joist, uh, gable, bowstring, scissor, and arch. And these can get a little bit more complex in design. There's also composite steel joists. Now these can be used in place of a wide flange beam. Now the advantages of this are they can be a little bit lighter than a wide flange beam. You can still get long spans up to 60 feet. And the open web nature of it allows you to bring your ductwork up into your joist. So your finished ceiling system and your uh, classrooms or different spaces in your, in your buildings can be higher. <clears throat> also the difference between this type of joist and a standard joist are the top and bottom cords are a little bit thicker. They're a little bit more heavy duty. That way they can handle the composite floor slab and the metal studs which you see here, these vertical elements can be attached to uh, the top cords of the deck. Now with a standard roof deck there's, there's a variety of it on the market. What's shown here are the two most common profile shapes that we run into in building projects. We have our, our B deck, which is a wide rib deck. It's an inch and a half in profile height. It can't span very far. Uh, usually we're looking at spans four to six feet on center. And then N type deck, which is three inches in profile height. Now, just like a beam or a joist, when you increase that profile height of a deck, you increase the structural capacity for the span. So it becomes a longer spanning type deck. Now with uh, N-type deck, you're looking at spans up to about 10 feet maximum. Now up here in the Chicago area where we happen to be today, uh, snow loads uh, to have to be taken into account so that span decreases significantly. Another type of deck is composite deck. Now this is uh, the deck that's used in flooring applications. The first two we saw were used for roof applications or ceiling applications. The composite deck is used for floor, app floor applications. Now the composite deck comes in inch and a half to three inch profile heights typically and can clear span or single span up to 14 feet. When we say single span or clear span, we're talking about the span between two supportive elements like two joists or two beams or two uh, bearing walls. <coughs> 
Here we have what we'd call an architectural style of deck. There's a, a few types of architectural style deck. This is a dovetail deck. Now a dovetail deck comes in two and three and a half inch profile heights. It can also be made acoustical, and that's what's shown here. Acoustical deck um, occurs when you have perforation added to the deck. In this case, it's added to the bottom side of the plank of the dovetail deck. And then a uh, plastic lath is added to it, and then insulation. So that provides the acoustics that are, are needed when you have an acoustical deck. Now the NRC values for acoustical deck um, are important. You're going to get higher NRC values with your architectural style decks, your, your dovetail deck or your cellular deck, which you'll see slides of here shortly. Here we have a deep rib profile deck. Now deep rib profile decks are the longest spanning decks on the market. They come in four and a half, six and seven and a half inch profile heights. Because of that, you can get clear spans over 30 feet. Now, the cellular versions of these, you can get clear spans up to 44 feet. And a cellular version of deck is when a liner, pa liner panel is added to the underneath side of the deck and welded to it in the factory. So you can get a cellular version of deck with the deep rib deck profile. You can get it with a composite floor deck profile. You can also get it with a B and an N deck uh, profile as well. Here we have the dovetail deck again. This happens to be the two inch profile shown here. Now an alternate uh, use for a deck is using it as a cladding system. And thus it's a little bit more architectural in nature. This happens to be Target Field in Minneapolis, Minnesota where the Minnesota Twins play baseball. Uh, this is the two inch deck using this application and it has a Kynar finish on it, which is a PBDF finish. It has a 30 year warranty. Whenever you have deck in a high profile application that's exposed as a cladding system, we want to make sure that that paint has a good finish, something that's going to last a long time and endure against UV uh, rays and uh, also the weather and the humidity in the environment. Oops. Okay, some other uses for a deck or architectural deck. Uh, would be uh, canopies and soffits. Here we have a train stop in San Diego for a commuter train. The dovetail deck is used here. As you can see, it's laid in the weak axis, which would be perpendicular to the ribs of the deck. It's easy, easier to curve deck in that manner. <coughs> Excuse me. And here we have the dovetail deck used again uh, as a uh, canopy or a sunshade. It's been perforated like you would for acoustics, but it allows the sun, in this case, to filter through it and diffuse the light. Another use for deck and joists or stadiums, um, just like in Target Field, here we have Miami Dolphins, uh, where some deck was used. It was pre-coated, pre-finished in the factory, and attached to some large joist girders. Here we have a band shell that's using some uh, dovetail deck on the underneath side of it. There's a standing seam roof that's been added to the top side of it. Here we have a ceiling view of another uh, building type where the deck has been left exposed. It gives a plank-like appearance, which is more architectural. Now you can take the dovetail deck and the deep rib deck and make it composite as well. And when you do that, you come, up with a longer, you come up with a longer spanning composite floor deck than a typical composite floor deck like we saw in an earlier slide. Uh, that would be the inch and a half two inch, three inch uh, profiles of composite floor deck. Here we have the dovetail. Uh, it comes in two and three and a half inch uh, deck profile heights with the concrete added to it to make it composite. And the deep rib profile deck, which also comes in four and a half, six and seven and a half, half inch profile heights with the concrete added to it for long span composite floor systems. Now the dovetail deck can clear span up to 28 feet if you use a three and a half inch profile height. With a two inch profile height, you can still get spans up to about 20 feet. Now with dovetail deck, you get a very thin slab profile, which replicates a long, uh, a composite, uh, I'm sorry, a hollow core concrete slab or a post tension concrete slab. Uh, you get that same thin profile with this. It is possible to get a profile uh, as thin as five and a quarter inches. So that's from underside of deck to top of concrete. Uh, it can use up to 40% less concrete than a poured in place concrete system. So that in itself is an advantage. It is a little bit more green, a little bit more efficient. Typically, the dovetail deck that's composite rests on light gauge panelized metal stud walls. And that's used in conjunction with the deck for MSR projects. 
MSR stands for multi-story residential. So, for example, your hotels, your dormitories, uh, apartment buildings, a lot of those will utilize this type of system. The dovetail composite deck on light gauge, com uh, light gauge uh, metal stud walls. Now with dovetail composite deck, it does have to be temporarily shored at seven foot center. So here we have the temporary shoring and that's put in place to keep the deck from sagging once the concrete's added to it. As you can see, we see the light gauge uh, metal stud walls here that it rests upon and that's typically the, um, the pairing for this type of system. Now with dovetail deck, there is quite a bit of flexibility. There's things that can be done with it. Um, you can suspend items from the deck using a, uh, a dovetail shape hanger that goes up into the flute of the deck. <clears throat> um, also with the composite version, it's pretty flexible. You can add openings to the deck after the concrete's been poured and it has set up. You can quarter roll for MEP pipe uh, pass-throughs. You can do uh, large openings up to 16, 18 inches for ductwork to come through. Now, if these openings need to be larger than that, reinforcing has to be added to that opening before the, con before, before the hole is cut in the concrete. Um, larger openings than 18 inches or so uh, would create a weak spot in the floor, so reinforcing needs to be added to those openings. Here we have a long span deep rib uh, composite deck. You can clear span up to 36 feet. I had mentioned just like the roof deck, it comes in four and a half, six and seven and a half inch profile heights. Now with the deep rib uh, composite deck, you can have unshored pores up to 22 feet. So that's an advantage of this system, having the, uh, the potential for not needing shoring underneath it. It does replicate a flat plate concrete system, just like a hollow core slab or a post tension concrete slab. What's different from this and standard composite deck are the ends are factory closed or bent down in the factory. Uh, that way plates are not need to be added in the field to keep concrete from going underneath or through the flutes of the deck. This also can be panelized, which is a safer, more cost effective method. Uh, if you panelize a deck in red iron frames on the ground and lift it into place, you'll have fewer welders on the ground working. Um, or not on the ground, in the air working, but you have some of the assembly done on the ground. So it does make for a safer construction site. That does make it a little bit more complex though, so that's something to note. Here we have an example of the dovetail, or I'm sorry, the deep rib composite deck being installed um, in a non-panelized method. Uh, we have the workers carrying a section of it here, a, a panel width of it, uh, to be installed on the site. Um, here you can see the ends are turned down a little bit. Um, that's done in the factory, uh, bent down on the edges, on the ends I mean. Now with deeper composite deck, there's a certified slab analysis program that's available. Uh, this is something that can be uh, uh, utilized to check for vibration and deflection because when you have these long spans like this, you don't want your deck to vibrate or deflect too much. Uh, Building system chaseways can be incorporated into a uh, deep rib composite uh, deck. Testing and analysis approvals are available uh, if you need that uh, for your records, uh, for your project. There is also on-site support and consulta consultation available uh, through uh, different uh, deck companies for using this type of system. Some additional advantages of using a long span deep rib composite deck system are new and retrofit construction, uh, multiple deployment strategies. There's a, a wide range of applications for this uh, beyond what's shown here, but here we have a old warehouse uh, building that was made out of heavy timber frame construction, which utilized the uh, deep rib composite deck in a retrofit application. I would mentioned cellular deck earlier. This is an example of deep rib cellular deck. Uh, this also happens to be an acoustical version as well as a composite version. So it's kind of a, a Swiss army knife of, of deck in this application. We have an acoustical ceiling system. It's also a structural roof and a floor above. And it's utilized in this application here in a school. If you go down this corridor, you see the, the deck actually spanning this way, uh, perpendicular to those um, blue uh, trusses and there is actually a, a walkway or a roof above it. 
This does get a little bit more complex. There's a lot to consider here. You have the concrete, you have the acoustics, you have the long span application going on. Chapter two is choosing the right system for your application. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, different building types uh, that use standard joist and deck, architectural, and a long span composite deck. So we've created a little sim city here, or a bird's eye view of a downtown area. Uh, the gray is a long span composite deck, which is typically used in high rise applications. The yellow is standard deck, and the blue is your architectural deck, which you would see showcased more in stadiums, uh, natatoriums, uh, large event spaces such as that. So first we're gonna look at big box or warehouse projects. And here we have some uh, standard B-deck used with some uh, joist on a roof for a large warehouse project. You can see the joists are placed closely together. B-deck cannot span very far. So uh, you're gonna see spanning uh, capabilities here of um, four to six feet on center. And then schools. Here we have a, uh, this is actually a community college in Des Moines, Iowa, that's using the dovetail deck and an auditorium project. It's also the acoustical deck, a three and a half inch dovetail deck. You can see the joists are spaced out a little bit further in this application. Another application for the dovetail deck beyond uh, gymnasiums and auditoriums in schools is classrooms. We're seeing this happen more out west. This happens to be in the San Francisco area and the Bay Area. We have the dovetail deck used on a roof application here. It's also uh, doubling as a finished ceiling system. It's acoustical. And it's resting on these glue lamb beams. You can see that it is a longer spanning deck, so the space is a little bit more open. It's more architectural. It's a, a, a big selling point for architects and specifiers when they want that specific type of look. And sports and recreation centers. Uh, this is a big don't. When you have an auditorium, uh, which is an indoor uh, water park or pool, um, you don't want to have a ceiling system of acoustical tile ceiling panels. They're going to get wet, they're going to deteriorate, they're going to fall into the water. What you want to do is you want to span or specify a long span uh, deck system. This happens to be the dovetail deck shown again here. You can use cellular deck in that application as well. Uh, it's acoustical in these applications here on the right hand side. There are some things to consider beyond the deck span and using a long span deck for these applications. Uh, first of all, this is an acoustical deck, so the insulation that's in it needs to be sealed. That means it's encapsulated, it's wrapped in PVC uh, plastic. Um, that keeps it from getting wet and deteriorating. Also, there, uh, the paint system is uh, pretty important for this. Uh, you want to make sure you start off with a a galvanized deck that's a G90 and not a G60 going up a level, making the deck a little bit more uh, uh, resilient in that manner. And then a good paint system. Instead of a, a two-part paint system, which would be your typical uh, epoxy and then a, a, a primer and then a polyamide epoxy coat on top of that, we would suggest that the architects, engineers, specifiers go a step further and use a three-coat system, which would be a primer coat a polyamide epoxy coat, which now becomes your intermediate coat, then an aliphatic polyurethane. Now that system should last at least 20 years without having to be uh, reapplied, which is important because in an auditorium, you don't want to have to uh, cover up all this equipment, drain the pool, and repaint it. So thinking ahead will save you money in the long run and time. Just a closer look at uh, a natatorium project using the dovetail deck. And it does give a, a plank-like look. It's very clean. Uh, it's modern. Um, typically, we see most uh, deck painted white, but you do have an option to paint uh, your deck in any color now. So, but white is typical for ceilings. In the lower uh, right-hand corner, you can see uh, the insulation uh, and the plastic lab that goes into uh, that uh, dovetail deck. And the same is true for cellular deck. Um, that same type of insulation allowed would go into a deep rib cellular deck. Here we have some gymnasium projects. Um, we do see a lot of schools that use dovetail deck. So there's quite a bit of, of photographs here of schools um, using that 
type of architectural deck and gymnasiums and, and natatoriums. Convention centers. This is Music City Center in Nashville, Tennessee. This is using NDEC on the roof, and uh, there's Joyce also involved in this uh, project here. Now, to create this curve, um, they actually had to walk down the deck on their hands and knees to create that. So they're a couple hundred feet in the air, so that's a pretty precarious position to be in for installing deck. Next, we're gonna look at this appendage here on the uh, right-hand side of the building. Actually, after the next slide, this is just a photograph of the roof. This is the, the parapet around some uh, uh, mechanical equipment on the roof of Music City Center. It's in a guitar shape. And here we are looking at this uh, little uh, appendage or addition to the building. Um, arch joists were used to create this curve that you see right here. Um, and then they use standard B deck on the roof. Now, if they hadn't put down these uh, drop down uh, wood panels here, you would have seen the deck. So if the deck is going to be left exposed, you want to consider a dovetail deck or a cellular deck. That way your fasteners aren't um, uh, seen. That kind of helps cover up any uh, roof fasteners that come through when the roof is attached to the deck. And transportation centers. Uh, here we have a, a large joist project. Uh, uh, just to illustrate that joists can be used to create very dynamic shapes. This is very architectural, uh, very interesting. Here we have an, a, a train station that's using uh, the deep rib cellular deck that's also acoustical. So just like the dovetail deck, it has that insulation and the plastic lad that goes into the cells of the deck. Uh, it's a long span deck, it's an acoustical ceiling system at the same time, so you're really combining systems on, on this type of work, this type of project. Here we have Raleigh-Durham Airport in Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina. Uh, this is in-deck, cellular, acoustical, and it's been curved. So there is ability now to curve in-deck on the strong axis. When I say the strong axis, that's parallel with the ribs, so it's curved on a bending machine. You can get radiuses as tight as 90 uh, feet. Um, it is uh, typically just around 100 feet is what's specified. Um, the reason being is the deck will start to crimp. Uh, the sidewalls or the flutes of the deck will start to crimp. The liner panel will start to crimp up if you go tighter than 90 feet. This is a 100 foot uh, radius in this application here. So the deck is running in this direction here, um, perpendicular to these white uh, purlins that are resting on these Goulam beams. So this is an acoustical ceiling system, uh, as well as a finish uh, structural, or, I mean, it's a finish, I'm sorry, it's an acoustical ceiling system, which is a finished ceiling, as well as a structural roof. This is Charlotte Douglas Airport, where some more dovetail deck has been used. You can kind of see it here on the upper roof. Um, it's also been used in the uh, rental car garage in the lower right-hand corner and on rotundas throughout the airport in the upper right-hand corner. This is an acoustical dovetail deck as well. Another airport project, I believe this is in San Antonio, Texas, using the dovetail acoustical deck, two inch. The spacing of the joist isn't quite as far as you can get with the, or the uh, beams in this case with the uh, three and a half inch version. Looking a little bit closer at stadiums here, this is Target Field in Minneapolis, Minnesota where the dovetail deck, two inch dovetail deck was used as a cladding system with a uh, Kynar finish, which was factory applied. Um, a Kynar finish is also a PBDF finish. Um, it's very reflective. I believe the color for this was champagne pearlized metallic. Just a closer look at the end condition here. You can see the uh, dovetail deck a little bit more clearly. Uh, it was attached to a light gauge metal, metal stud frame. Uh, it was not structural in, in any way other than it was supporting itself as it was attached to this frame. It's strictly a cladding system. Another look at Miami Dolphins with uh, some joist and some deck that was used on this project that was uh, painted. We're gonna look at multi-story residential now. There's quite a few slides on this type of system. It's a little bit more complex 
and a standard roof deck. This is long span dovetail composite deck. And I believe you saw this slide earlier. This is an MSR project, multi-story residential uh, condominium project using the uh, dovetail uh, composite deck on light gauge and metal stud frames. Another look at this project, and uh, it is possible to get six uh, stories within 60 feet using this type of, of system. Specifically, the uh, two-inch dovetail composite deck, which is uh, five and a quarter, can be as thin as five and a quarters in total profile height from top of concrete to underside of deck. So it is possible to get six stories within 60 feet. Uh, this has come in handy in Washington, D.C., where there's a height restriction. You can't be taller than the Capitol building. Land's very expensive, so developers want to get in as, as, as many units as they can within a volume of space. And we were just curious how this would stack up against, uh, say, a composite joy system with composite deck. So you can start to see your building does become shorter when you're uh, comparing uh, similar or same uh, underside of structure to top of floor heights, eight feet uh, for each floor, uh, 12 foot for the uh, uh, commercial or mixed use space below. And also we were curious what it would, how long it would take to, using that same model in the lower left hand corner, to put in another floor. So at the 12 story mark, uh, using the composite joist and standard composite deck, uh, you're actually able to get in another story, 13 stories at that same height using the dovetail uh, composite deck. That's the two inch composite deck. Another thing that's uh, a benefit, I should say, to using a composite deck. Now, whether it's a, a standard composite floor deck or a, a dovetail composite deck or a long span, uh, deep rib composite deck is the STC ratings and the IIC ratings. So these are what's important when you're doing multiple story applications. STC is a sound transmission coefficient. So that is the sound that goes through the floor when somebody walks across it and hits it with their heel. Um, a 51 is what you get to start with, with the, with the deck and the concrete. You build upon that. So this is your base point, uh, 51 for the uh, uh, two and uh, three and a half inch dovetail composite decks, 24 for the IIC. Also, fire ratings are, are gonna be inherent to composite deck. In this case, we're looking at the two inch uh, composite uh, dovetail deck, um, and also the acoustical version of the dovetail composite deck. You're looking at uh, fire ratings, uh, UL fire ratings from 1.5 to three hours with the normal weight to uh, two to three hours of the lightweight concrete for the two inch dovetail composite. For the two inch dovetail acoustical comp composite, you're looking at uh, normal concrete uh, ratings of one to three hours and a one to three also for the lightweight concrete. Then moving on to the three and a half inch dovetail composite, uh, we have a normal weight uh, concrete having a rating of 1.5 to three hours. Same for the lightweight. Um, and also it's the same for the acoustical versions of the three and a half inch dovetail composite. You're looking at uh, fire ratings of 1.5 to three hours. Oop, went too far again here. So looking at market, market acceptance here uh, and costs and competitive forces, we're competing against concrete, uh, post-tension concrete, hull core slabs, even double T slabs. We're competing against that with the center composite floor deck, long span uh, composite deck, uh, which would be your dovetail composite or your deep rib composite deck, as well as your composite joist with standard composite floor deck. With deep rib composite uh, deck, you can support it on different uh, frames. We have existing heavy timber frame construction in the upper left hand corner, uh, steel plate composite beams, in the upper right hand corner, that, which is actually a proprietary system. And then we have the uh, wide flange beams in the lower left and concrete block bearing walls or CMU walls in the right hand corner. Uh, when we're looking at MEP uh, integration, that's me mechanical, electrical, and plumbing integration into uh, composite long span uh, deep rib deck, there's a lot of accessories that uh, we're familiar with that can still be used. Uh, floor boxes, strap hangers, thread rod hanging devices, uh, 
pre-pour uh, inserts, uh, DDC hats, deck struts, uh, strap hangers. There's several accessories that still can be used uh, in conjunction with this type of system. Now looking at the uh, deep rib uh, composite deck, uh, the STC value for that would be 40 to start with. You can build upon that, um, adding um, carpeting or a drop down acoustical tile ceiling, uh, wood floors with a spacer between the wood and the concrete. The IIC number is 20. And the uh, fire ratings that you can get with the four and a half, six and seven and a half inch deeper composite decks are all one to two hours. Um, this is the range. There's a variety of ULs that uh, can contribute to these. Um, that's for normal weight and lightweight concrete. Uh, retrofitting applications are uh, have, have, have utilized the deep rib composite deck, as we had mentioned before. It can be used to replace existing wood floors uh, when we're using heavy timber beams. Um, deflection uh, can be up to three inches. It can help stabilize the facade. <clears throat> you can maximize the ceiling height. A sound performance uh, is, is achieved using this type of system as well. Also, uh, radiant heat can be added to the floors in these systems. Here we have a closer look at a case study using uh, the deep rib uh, composite deck in conjunction with the uh, heavy, heavy timber frame existing um, beams, timbers if you will. Uh, the spans were, were quite great and the architect and developer, structural engineer were looking for a system that uh, could be used to uh, span these 20 plus wide bays without having, having to introduce any uh, secondary structural members down the middle uh, supports of the deck, such as a, uh, a joist or another uh, beam. Just a look at what that uh, building looked like as it was finished out. Now we have a high-rise application. Um, there's unique challenges when you're looking at high-rise application, applications using deep rib uh, composite deck. You want to control the weight. Uh, foundations can uh, be uh, minimized, money can be saved if you use longer spanning systems which make your building less heavy. Uh, you can actually do some nice overhangs which can support green roofs and terraces. So this is a project in New York City. Uh, you see some cantilevers on the uh, uh, right edge of the building there. Um, that's used with wide flange composite beams in conjunction with a deep rib composite deck. We have some closer uh, views of it, some actual photos. The first one was a rendering. You can see how it steps out. Uh, uh, it's very dynamic. They're actually able to go out over the uh, pawn shop next door. So in New York City, you can actually buy or lease the air rights of uh, your uh, tenant next door above them. I mentioned the panelized delivery method, which can be used with the deep rib uh, composite deck. The deep rib composite deck can go into a red iron frame uh, and then be, be lifted into place, which is a safer method. Uh, if you have fewer people working um, in the air, a lot of assembly can be done on the ground. Then healthcare projects are another type of project that um, utilizes a deep rib uh, composite deck. Here we have a hospital project with a 100,000 square foot vertical expansion. Uh, from about this point here on. This is in Charlotte, North Carolina, Presbyterian Hospital, that is. They're able to keep the cancer center and the ER open. The loading docks remain operational throughout the construction process. The construction schedule is tight, so this system aided in uh, meeting that uh, tight construction uh, schedule. They're able to match existing heights, uh, floor heights between ring, uh, different um, wings, which eliminated ramping. Uh, this is a high performance floor system and then uh, this sound and, and the fire and radiant heat can also be introduced in this type of system. Radiant heat wasn't used in this specific application though. Uh, we have an, another look here at the uh, hospital. You can see these spans are quite large. In healthcare applications, open spans are, are very important. You want column free spans, 
you want uh, the ability to, to change that uh, use group that would utilize that space easily without having to run into columns as an architect or an engineer. I'm sure you've ran into situations where a column was right where you needed your ADA bathroom to be. So by opening up these spaces, you're able to um, uh, help uh, fight that uh, situation from occurring. Chapter three is coatings and finishing options. So I'd mentioned uh, the natatorium example, and that's a good example that, uh, to illustrate um, uh, using the most aggressive type system, which would be our three coat system. But typically, uh, what we see is a, a primer coat uh, used uh, on deck, um, and then it's painted in, 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 the, in the field. Uh, sometimes we see the two coat system, which is good for most interior applications and some exterior applications, which is your primer coat and your polyamide epoxy coat, which should be kind of midway in the uh, scale here of non-aggressive to more aggressive. And then that three coat system, which is um, something we would want to specify for an auditorium or say you have some deck that's exposed near a large body of water, say the ocean, which also has a salt content to the humidity. Um, that would be the uh, primer coat, the polyamide epoxy, then the aliphatic polyurethane. Now there are more paint variations beyond this, but these are the three levels or types of paint that we run into most often uh, in uh, specs for different uh, building applications. So with the pre-finish options, um, there are, are two right now that are available from uh, uh, deck manufacturers. There's a coil coated option and the spray applied option. Uh, both are, are water-based. There are some primers that are oil-based. Um, application uh, is going to be based on exposure, where that deck will be going. Is it outside? Is it inside? Is it uh, exposed to UV? Is it exposed to water, moisture? Is, is the environment that it's in caustic? Um, coating thickness is going to be a lot more easily controlled in the factory. So if you do a cold coated finish in the factory or a spray, spray applied finish in the factory, you're going to get fewer mills of paint. Mills are how we measure thickness of paint. Um, it's going to be more even. It's going to look a lot better. So when you feel paint, it is possible to, uh, just like when you paint a wall at home, get skips. You'll miss areas. So painting in the factory is, is, a, is a way to go for a better finish. Um, color matching uh, is what's uh, available now. Um, you don't have to have just a, a, a white finished deck. You could um, have a, a gray or a blue or whatever color you'd like. Just specify it and uh, whoever is awarded the uh, deck uh, contract will make sure they match that paint accordingly in the factory. Now all quill coated deck is warranted. There's a warranty for it um, that's passed on to the paint manufacturer. Spray applied finishes in the factory are performance based anywhere from five to 30 years, depending on which paint system you specify. Now, coal coating and, and spray booth applying the paint are two entirely different methods for factory finishing. In the coal coated method, uh, the deck ar arrives on large coils before it's rolled into shape. So it's painted in the coil coating process. Then uh, if it's gonna be uh, perforated for acoustics, it's then perforated, then it's rolled into shape and then cut into section. And and that lies an issue. You cannot specify cold coated paint for uh, finishes for natatoriums because of that perforation that's happening for the acoustics is done after the paint is applied, so the holes will rust. So for natatoriums, you'd, like, you'd want to specify the spray applied method, which would be taking uh, the coil, you'd perforate it, you'd roll it into shape, in the profile shape of the deck, cut it in a section, and then you'd spray paint it in a large spray booth so all those holes get coated or you could field paint it, which would be kind of the same application as spray booth applying it, but you'd be doing it in the field. But the uh, disadvantage to that would be um, in field painting applications, people might get sloppy. They might have skips. They might linger too long and seal the holes of, of the uh, perforated deck. So when looking at paint systems, the best value really is the epoxy primer with the polyamide epoxy intermediate coat and polyurethane for natatoriums. Um, the reason being is if you uh, specify, uh, say A, the epoxy primer uh, with the polyamide epoxy intermediate finish, uh, it might initially cost you less, $87,000 uh, for this um, 30,000 square foot project we're looking at here. But within 10 years or less, you're gonna have to repaint it. And when you uh, look at uh, uh, 
escalation in cost and uh, inflation, it's going to actually cost you more in 20 years than it would be to use the uh, best value here, which is the uh, epoxy primer, the polyamide epoxy intermediate coat, and the uh, polyurethane uh, top coat. Now you could go even further and do the uh, option here, option D, which is the uh, uh, epoxy primer, polyamide epoxy intermediate coat, and the fluoropolymer coat, which is a PBDF finish. That's going to cost a lot more and it might last longer, but it's really best to go kind of in the middle. So that's why we chose uh, C here. So when you're looking at uh, paint, you're looking at three factors. You're looking at chalk, fade, and film integrity. So with chalk, you're looking at residue, uh, results from UV radiation. Uh, with fade, you're looking at color change, you're also looking at results from UV radiation. Um, and then film integri integrity, you're looking at crack, peel, blister, delamination. And uh, so these are the three uh, areas that we look at when we're looking at paint systems and evaluating which one is best for an application. Now here we have two case studies. Uh, one is a field paint application, the other is a factory applied application. This is Raleigh-Durham Airport that we saw earlier. This deck was not factory finished. It, it actually had a gray weldable primer applied to it uh, in the factory. The liner panel was then added to the uh, end deck in this application. Uh, you can actually see the weld marks from when that occurred in the factory. They're going to paint the entire system white, so they taped off all the glue lamb beams. They're going to paint the other structure and the deck white in this application. Then we have a factory finish deck here. This is Target Field again. This was a coil coated finish. Um, it didn't have to be sprayed with applied, it's not perforated, so it's not going to rust. So factory applying the deck with the coil coated method worked well for target field. Here we have different interior applications. Um, we have uh, the one in the middle actually could be a coil coated finish. It could be sprayed with applied. Um, it's not a, a wet environment. It is perforated for acoustics, so you could use a coil coated method on that. You could spray apply the, the middle one there. You could uh, uh, spray booth apply it as well, spray paint it in the field. Uh, the one here on the left is perforated as a sunshade. So that can't be coil coated. Water would be coming through it. That needs to be uh, painted in the field or spray booth applied in the factory. Then on the end, on the right hand side, the far end, we have the dovetail deck there again in an auditorium. That can't be coil coated because it's a moist environment. Um, you need to look at spray booth applying that with a finish um, in the factory or spray painting it in the field. You don't want the holes to rust. And then two different exterior applications here. Uh, neither one of these can be coil coated. Um, this is a deep rib uh, profile deck. Um, the ribs are, are so deep and so severe in this, if it is coil coated, it's going to tear the paint. So this needs to be spray booth applied in the field or painted in the, or spray booth applied in the factory or painted in the field. And the same is true for this, either spray painted in the field or spray booth applied in the factory with the finish. It's perforated so the holes will rust. That cannot be coil coated in that application. And chapter four is sustainability. There's um, quite a few things to consider when looking at sustainability. Uh, first of all, steel has quite a bit of recycled content. Uh, it has some of the most recycled content available in building materials. Uh, a consistent supply chain has been documented for your um, uh, green projects. There is vendor documentation that can be provided for you for your green uh, projects, your lead projects. Uh, the post-consumer debt content that's recycled um, is 70%, and for joist, it's 80%. Um, so that's, what's, uh, that's a maximum that's available. And this is based on lead version four, which focuses more on life cycle assessment. Uh, you can also get up to six lead credits for this uh, using that amount of recycled content in your deck and joist. It's also possible to get one lead air indoor quality credit uh, if the deck is completely factory finished because VOCs don't apply when the deck is uh, finished in the factory. It's all, all the off gassing is controlled, it's not released in the environment. So it is possible to get up to se seven lead credits uh, if you have a high amount of recycled content in your deck and joist and also have your uh, uh, deck factory finished. Some other ways to maximize efficiency and contribute to sustainability in a project is value engineering. Uh, there's load zone joist, half gauge deck, deeper joist seats. 
Uh, we also initially talked about integrating ceiling systems into your deck, uh, your roof deck. Um, all this can ex uh, reduce materials uh, for less waste. Here we have an example of what a load zone joist is. Um, instead of doing a heavy duty uh, uh, 24 KCS joist where you can put uh, point loads anywhere along it, uh, it is more advantageous to, if you can think ahead and, and design ahead to use a load zone joist. Uh, in this case, the, we knew the load would be placed uh, 10 feet from the ends, therefore the entire joist didn't have to be made uh, bulked up, made heavy duty, uh, and in that instance they were able to save 36 percent in weight. So we're going from 600 pounds uh, per joist with the uh, KCS joist to this special uh, joist, uh, load zone joist, uh, down to 420 pounds. So that's something to consider when you're de designing um, a joist, choosing joist for a project, just trying to be a little bit more specific with where your loads will be on your roof your air handling units and such, and uh, that can uh, contribute to some cost savings. Also half gauge deck, uh, looking at a 5,000 square foot project here, um, instead of using a uh, 20 or a 22 gauge deck, uh, you could do a 21 gauge deck. Now a 20 gauge deck in this instance would be 490 tons would be required. Uh, if you did a 21 gauge deck in between the 20 and the 22, uh, you could uh, only use uh, 450 tons. So that saves 40 tons, which is equivalent to $25,000. So using less material again does contribute to the bottom line of the project. Uh, throughout the project we talked about, or this presentation that is, we talked about integrating ceiling systems into the structural roof system. So, so specifically, when we're looking at the dovetail deck, the three and a half inch, uh, as opposed to a uh, inch and a half B deck, you're able to span quite a bit further. You can eliminate joists, so that's going to save you money, make your building lighter. It's acoustical too, so you can eliminate the need for a drop down acoustical tile ceiling. So you're combining systems, you're lightening your structural system, you're making uh, a, perhaps a, a more uh, architecturally uh, open uh, and uh, light feeling environment. So when looking at deck and joist, we're looking at a holistic approach. We're looking at acoustics, NRC values, STC values, IIC values, structural uh, characteristics, uh, gravity and seismic loading, uh, wind loading. Uh, we might be looking at environmental considerations, lead, recycle content, uh, reducing VOCs, or aesthetics, which would be uh, architecturally exposed uh, finished coating systems for ceilings, uh, maybe the, the look of the deck, whether it's a cellular deck, which is a smooth look, or a dovetail deck, which is a plank-like look. So less materials means less extracting, processing, fabrication, freight storage, staging, erection, and post waste. So using less from the beginning is uh, contributing to a domino effect. Uh, you're just going down the line in the end, uh, ideally you would have uh, less material used and also save some money. So that's the end of the presentation. Now, if you have any questions, please let us know. We'll be glad to take them uh, now after the presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for your participation today. I hope we answered all of your questions well. We do have other courses for credit which you can take. Please visit our website for more information. Thank you again for coming. New Millennium Building Systems. We're building a better steel experience.